I know you're disappointed. I know you expected the world to end yesterday and it didn't happen. Uh, and we're still here, but as luck would have it, I went ahead and got a sermon ready just in case. Uh, you know, it's, um, it, it's so funny. Uh, I, I think sometimes people just don't get it. You know, sometimes they just don't get it. Um, for Mr. Camping and his followers, uh, I'm worried today um, that many will lose faith and that uh, many will drift away after having been led astray by that, by that nonsense. Um, in the Orthodox Church, there's, um, uh, the, it, within the liturgy, there's a lot of different little sayings that take place that are really important. And one of them that you hear quite often is the words, wisdom, let us attend. And what that means simply is this, it's, it's kind of cueing you, something important is about to be said, pay attention. And one of the most significant points of the liturgy, um, the consecrated bread and wine are elevated, and as that's happening, it's proclaimed, wisdom, let us attend. The holy things are for the holy. In other words, if you want to understand holy things, you've got to be holy yourself. And so all to, uh, to all the end of the world people, holy things are for the holy. They clearly have no understanding of the scriptures as much as they say they're arguing from it. Okay, if you know the scriptures, if you pay attention to the scriptures, you can't escape the fact that Jesus said, you do not know the day or the hour. You can't escape the fact that Jesus said, only my Father knows. You can't escape the fact that Jesus said, I will come like a thief in the night at a time when you least expect it. Um, that kind of nonsense um, has to stop. Um, that kind of nonsense does no one any good, and it's contrary to the faith and to the gospel and to the teachings of the scriptures. Um, so don't, and I, and I trust all of you, uh, but don't be led astray ever by that sort of nonsense. Okay? We don't know when it's gonna happen. We're not supposed to know when it's going to happen. We're supposed to live as though it might just happen today. That's how we're supposed to live. And that brings me to this week. And I think the ways that we need to understand who God is and what he gives us. Uh, when I was a young boy, a school boy, uh, my family had a really, really uh, high importance on gift giving. Christmas, birthdays, Everybody had to get a gift, not just one, but many. And it was important in, in, in my parents' eyes that we learn that. And so even when we were in grade school, before we were working and had incomes of our own, my parents would give me money so that I could go to the store and buy them something. Okay. Christmas, birthdays, whatever. Every family member, my mom, my dad, my sister, my brother, my Aunt Mary who lived with us, every Christmas, every birthday, I got money so I could go buy them a gift with what they'd given me. So I was buying gifts with money that wasn't mine, buying it for my family because that's what they wanted me to do. Uh, and I've told people that over the years and people say, well, that's kind of strange. But you know, I don't think it is uh, because it taught me the value of gift giving. It taught me the value of letting people know that they are loved and that they're appreciated, that they're well thought of. And it wasn't really as I began to grow in my faith, it wasn't really a very big leap for me to understand how God gives gifts and how God does what he does. Uh, what I'd like you to do is listen again uh, to today's epistle reading from the letter of St. James. And I'm gonna read it from the um, English Standard Version, a little bit more modern, uh, so it's a little bit more easily understood. But listen again. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger, for the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore, 
put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. Receive with meekness the implanted word. Last week, I reflected a little bit with you on how God's gift of holy joy has been planted within each of us. And this week I want to kind of continue that and reflect on some of the other things that God has planted within us. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from God. Every gift from God, coming from God. And I think, you know, on the face value of things as Christians, we can look at what St. James says and we can accept that. Yeah, I know that. I know that every gift comes from God. I know that I can't have nothing apart from God. But I think often we fail to understand the full implication of what that really means. I hear it all the time. All the time. Father, I want to pray, but I don't know how. I want to give God glory and praise and the honor and the worship that's due him, but I don't know how. And besides that, I'm not worthy. I'm weak, I'm human, I'm sinful, I don't know how to do it, I can't do it. We say that we want to pray, but we're always afraid that our prayers somehow don't measure up and that somehow everything we do and everything we say is somehow insufficient. We say that we want to praise God, but when we do so, we become afraid that we're inauthentic or somehow insincere. We say that we want to worship him, but that somehow we're unworthy of that. We say that we want to follow his teachings, that we want to belong to his church, that we want to live in harmony with all people, but we're afraid always that we can't do it. We want to pray, we want to worship, we want to draw nearer to God, we want to place ourselves in fellowship with him and with everyone that we meet. We want to pray, we want to worship, we want to do everything that we know we're supposed to do, but when it comes down to it, we're so terrified that we're not able and that we're not worthy. And we're right, we're not. And that's the beauty of Christianity. That's the beauty of belonging to a church. That's the beauty of learning to approach God through the tradition that we have. Because here's what we have to understand. We want to follow God. We want to do what's right, but we don't know how. Just like he implanted within us a gift of holy joy, he's also implanted within us every gift that we need. Just like my parents giving me money so that I could buy them something. He gives me the gift of prayer so that I can pray to him. He gives me the gift of knowledge so that I can study his word and his teachings in the Bible and in the teachings of the, and the tradition of the church. He gives me everything I need so that I can draw near, so that I can approach him, so that I can begin to learn and do what I need to learn and do. He gives us everything we need every good and perfect gift is from above coming down from the father of lights every good and perfect gift is ours including as it said in today's gospel the gift of the holy spirit the helper the paraclete placed within us planted within us at our baptisms so that we can be everything that god wants us to be so that we can do everything that he wants us to do. Left to ourselves, we're right. We can't do it. We don't have the strength. We don't have the wisdom. We don't have the grace to pray, to draw near to him, to worship him. We don't, left to ourselves, we don't. But here's the good news. God delights, listen to that again. God delights in our worship. He delights in our prayer. He delights in our praise of him. He wants that from us. He needs that from us. So he gives us everything we need in order to do it. That's what we have to understand. It doesn't matter how unworthy we think we are. It doesn't matter how little we think we know. 
It doesn't matter. He gives us everything we need so that we can give it back to him. That's what he's placed within us at our baptisms. That's the gift that he's placed deep within us. We have within us, each of us, the ability to pray, the ability to draw near to him, the ability to commune with him and become one with him. That's the gift that he's placed within us. All we have to do is understand that and accept it, as he says, with meekness, with gentleness. Accept the gift that he's placed deep, deep within us and begin to, to live with that knowledge, to live with what he's given us. And we won't have it overnight. What we have to understand is that it is a lifelong process. It's a story of growth through the rest of our lives. But it's worth beginning. It's worth starting. It's worth saying, okay, I accept what he's given me, and I'll learn now to live with it, to grow with it. That's what being a Christian, that's what being a follower of Christ really means, is that we understand and accept the reality that left to ourselves, we don't have what we need. But God, who is so loving and so kind and so generous and so gracious, the God who wants and needs our prayer, our praise, our worship, gives us everything we need so that we can give it back to him. All we need to do is be attentive to what he's placed within us and to receive it with meekness. Receive the implanted word which is able to save your souls. That's what he's given us. Think about that. He didn't have to, but he so loves us and so wants us to be near him and to be with him. He gives us everything we need in order to accomplish that. St. Paul understood that reality as well. In fact, you find it throughout all the epistles, you know, throughout the New Testament, Paul, John, Peter, it's always there. Let the word of Christ, rich as it is, dwell in you. Holy Spirit prays within us. You are temples of the Holy Spirit. Over and over and over we hear these things throughout the New Testament, throughout the different epistles that we read Sunday after Sunday. Wisdom, let us attend. Wisdom, stand upright. Hear what's being said. Hear what's being proclaimed. Hear the glory of the God who loves us so intensely that he gives us everything we need so that we can love him back. That's all this is about. He loves us, we're supposed to love him. And he so desperately wants our love that he gives us everything we need to enable us to love him. Don't tell me that you can't pray. Don't tell me that you can't worship God. Don't tell me that you don't understand because it doesn't matter. He gives you everything you need to draw near to him, everything you need to be one with him, everything you need to understand, whatever it is you need to understand. He loves you that much. He cares for you that much. Do you understand that? Do you know that? Let us attend. Pay attention. Hear what he's saying. Don't any longer be afraid of what you don't know. Don't ever be afraid of what you don't know because he's given you everything you need to know him. It's all that matters. Just like my parents gave me what I needed to give to them, that's what God does with each of us. I think about that a lot. I think about the gifts that he's given me and how in my life, I have not been attentive to them, how I've not paid attention, how I've not learned from them. And since I've come here, strange things have started to happen to me. And I find myself in a situation where, undeservedly so, all my dreams are coming true. But most of all, I realize what an incredible gift he has given me. And that's the gift of my priesthood. And I come to understand more and more that I can't have that gift, I can't possess that gift, unless I'm giving it to you. 
That's what he does in the church. He enables us to become who we're supposed to be. All we have to do is pay attention. All we have to do is receive with meekness the implanted word that can save our souls.